it seems like you're a feel good person. Like you want to feel good, except for when you 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 tried to get your wife back. You was hurt. You was hurt. Yeah. Well, I was, was confused. You was confused. No, I yeah. was confused because because I knew that we weren't supposed to be together anymore. But I that I had just had a child, mm -hmm. and the last thing I wanted to do was spend half of my life with, mm. away from my child. Mm -hmm. The next eighteen years, only seeing him three and a half days a week. That's real. Mm -hmm. So there isn't a single thing you wouldn't try. So that album was the most jumbled and confused album because it, that was the most jumbled and confused part of my. Life, so I I said everything I was going through. So one day I wanted to get her back. The next day I knew it was over. You know, one day right. I wanted to make it work. The next day I knew there was no chance. So that period oh, was that, that your therapy though? Making yeah. That? Oh yeah, music right. has always been my diary, my therapy. It's and sometimes I guess that time it didn't work. You know, right, right. it didn't work. Uh, well, it might not have worked uh, externally, no, but, but maybe internally. But then, and then these are the and I'm going to drop. I'm going to drop. <laughs> and then these are the beautiful moments. So I'm at I'm at a birthday a, a big birthday party. All these people that I haven't seen this this person in a long time. Time. But uh, his daughter Zoe had been in the studio with me while I was making the Paula album. She had come to visit, right? So Lenny Kravitz is sitting there and he goes, Yo, Zoe told me about the album because she heard it in the studio. And I listened to it and I thought it was amazing. So right there, right. Here I, here's another peer of mine that I love and Lenny, respect. Lenny motherfucking and Kravitz. Lenny yeah. motherfucking Kravitz. Let me get a, let me get a blunt. Thinking, let me get a blunt. And he's telling me when I, when I sold, barely sold anything right. and everybody told me it was a big mistake and he's saying I thought it was amazing. I thought it was beautiful. Right. It said something right. to the respect of I really respected what you did on that album. Right. And that's what we do as artists. We hit, we miss, but we have to try and share and tell our story. Right. And my story at that time was all over the place. Right. Nah, I mean, I, that, when I was listening, I was like, well, okay, I see, I see what's gonna happen. But you tried. You tried to get it back. You made a whole no, album. No, I, I tried to sell Oh, the idea. The, the idea of okay. getting her back. But I wasn't actually working on getting her back at the time. And that's why, Ooh. because we were already done. Ooh. You we wanted your done. family together. You wanted to I wrote the songs in real son. time. I wrote the whole album in, right. in maybe two months, you know. But I knew we weren't going to be back together. And that was okay. Right. You know, I heard this great quote recently by Jay Shetty. And you guys ever know this guy? Jay Shetty does a lot of inspirational stuff. And he said, people think that growing apart is a bad thing. But you're still growing. Just because you grew apart doesn't mean you didn't grow. Right. And that really touched me deep because I was like, you know what? That's what happened. We were both, her career is taken off. She's got her own life, her own career. My career is taken off. I got my own thing. We've got a baby. We're both changing and growing. But the problem is we grew apart. And that's just something you have to respect instead of take as an L. That's wow. not necessarily an L. Wow. You did, know what I mean? Did Meghan Markle... Write your wedding invitations? Yes. And Meghan Markle wrote our wedding invitations in calligraphy. Yo, what kind of fucking life is this guy live? She was a calligraphy, <laughs> she's a calligraphy uh, expert. And <laughs> somehow when she was doing an interview, getting married, she said uh, that she did our uh, wedding invitations. That's the kind of shit that happens in Hollywood. <laughs> Yo, Megan fucking was just, she's married, she's literally married to you. And, and she happened to do your wedding invitations. How the fuck is that? Man, that's Hollywood. That's why I always just say, everyone's it's Hollywood. Hey, that's man, it's Hollywood. Anything's possible. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> Anything. Um, speaking of that, you know, growing up in, in Los Angeles. Yeah. And um, like, I see, I see how you kept saying the Valley and you notice none of us was knowing what the fuck he was talking about because well, I, 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 mean, right, when I, I say the valley, it's an LA I, thing. Yes, yeah, LA yeah, thing. LA, everyone that else, I, I looked at my, yeah, I looked at my Harlem's friends. Like, Harlem's like, where's my, the valley? Is yeah. that in Denver? I looked at a couple, a couple of my <laughs> friends and they looked, but like it's it's actually it's actually one of the toughest towns to be in, right? Mm. Because it's almost like everyone's a fucking star in, mm. in California. It's it's uh, the person bringing you your burger. Yeah. Was on Martin in, right. eight, in 1989, and he's just out there living. It's just like it's just like that. Yeah. Is that something that you're adapted to? You're, you're just used to, or I don't. I think everything has its pluses and minuses. You know, right. I think people in Hollywood they tend to think that they're um, this close to stardom, and the mm. fact is, a few of them are. Right. right. <laughs> it really is. You know. So I have, I've seen it happen. I've literally seen somebody. A, a month earlier and then the next month they're on the cover of Time Magazine and nobody knows. I mean, it's like it's, things like this really do happen and I've been lucky enough to to see so many journeys realize their potential. So I do believe even when I see my kids I don't tell them this is not possible. Anything is possible. I've seen it happen. I've made the impossible possible. You know, so how, I mean? do you, how do you prepare them for the rougher side of that? Because the percentages are against most. Well I, I, I don't encourage any of them to get into entertainment business. I encourage them to have craft. 
right. to build craft. Something you love to do, if you do it long enough and you build a craft at it, you will succeed. You will find right. a place. You can't just want to be a star. You want to be a star, good luck. You know what right. I mean? But you want to have craft. And if you earn the hours that it takes to learn a craft, I spent 12 hours in the studio every day by the time I was from 16 to 20. You know what I mean? So by the time I was 20, by the time I was 22, I had written and produced two dozen golden platinum records before I'd ever released one of my own songs, I had already had two dozen golden platinum albums. You know, I was on Mark Ant. I wrote Mark Anthony's. Uh, yeah, you got to look for for salsa, Christina right? For, for like, no, no. The funny thing was, uh, I was I had this lucky streak in my late teen years, in my early twenties, where I happened to be on everybody's biggest album. I, I, the song that I wrote for Usher, Confessions. The song I wrote for Christina was her debut album, her biggest album. The song I wrote for Mark Anthony, his biggest selling American album. The song I wrote for Maya, it was her platinum album. So I had this incredible luck. Pink, right, Pink's pink. biggest album wow. was her first album. All of my notes. All so my notes. so the, this was literally by and you know by the time I was 22 years old, I I just amassed a. a, a Who's great helping you get those placements? Because that's uh, difficult. Publishers. You have a publishing company. Luckily, I signed a publishing deal when I was about 16, 17, and she would pitch me to all these artists, and they'd come by our studio, and we'd write a song for them, and, wow. and then just get lucky to be on a... <laughs> on a I never had the hit. Right. I never had the hit. Always had a cut album on cut. the biggest album. Right. Yeah. Well, that's all you need. Hey, man. <laughs> you ready for a quick Thomas Slam? Let's go. <clears throat> you guys mind if I do a quick uh, cigarette break? Yeah, okay. 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 okay.